Salasi Satufe, she's a public practice associate. Uh, she's working at the moment on the innovative science program at Be First Regeneration at Barking and Dagenham. She's a co-founder of Black Females in Architecture and uh, she's an RABA council member. She recently also became chair of NLA's Next Gen Sounding Board. So Salasi, tell me first about the work you're doing at Barking and Dagenham with Be First. I am managing the Innovative Sites Programme, which is essentially a small sites programme. And I am looking at sort of infill sites, background sites, garage sites, um, with the focus on trying to um, push innovation on those sites in delivering those sites and bringing them forward in the way that they're brought forward. So we're looking at, for example, using the the GLA small site small builders portal as a, as a way to bring them forward and we're also speaking a lot to um, different SMEs across across London who are quite confident with working on small sites um, we're also looking at um, things like community-led housing and there's also an emphasis on trying to really look into achieving um, real high standards of sustainability and design quality all around. So those are some key aims and objectives of the programme. And obviously them being dealing with small sites makes it even more tricky. But um, yeah, that's what my main role is. I'm also working with um, some of the larger teams. I'm a member of the um, design team. Um, so I'm also doing some design management on some of um, the main B First portfolio projects coming through. Perhaps uh, for those who may not be uh, too aware, how, how does actually public practice operate and how, how is it helping boroughs across London? So public practice is, a, uh, I guess, a social enterprise and its main sort of objective is around bringing built environment professionals back into the public sector. So a lot of people who are interested in that sort of way, a different way and approach to delivering for the built environment and delivering for, I guess, the general public, people like architects and people from all sorts of spheres and walks of the built environment profession. So in my cohort, for example, we've got, like I said, architects, we've got people who've got backgrounds in planning and urban design, community engagement, and all these different facets. And the idea through public practice is to um, give them an opportunity to be placed in different local authorities and the local authorities come forward um, with different aspirations and different needs and the candidates are matched up with um, the local authorities in order to um, meet that need. So in my case, for example, um, when I first applied to public practice, I didn't actually get um, a suitable match. But in the, in the sort of next round, B first happened to have submitting, submitted um, this role. And it was felt that I was a good match for it, which is pretty great. Um, I'm a local. I live in Barking and Dagenham. I was brought up here. So it, it feels really good to be able to contribute to the, the development that's happening locally here. You've also just taken over as chair of the NLA's Next Gen Sounding Board. So can you tell me about that, what, what your hopes are for getting involved with that? I've been involved in a, quite a number of different things in the, in the, in the recent sort of three years, um, as well as the RIBA, as you mentioned in my introduction. And I feel like it's definitely opened my eyes more to be seeing that there is a need to try and put different voices in these different spaces and it's one thing recognizing that and calling that out but it's also another thing actually putting yourself forward to be that person and to be that voice to 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 represent sort of a different demographic or different voice or a different experience or a different background or upbringing class all of those different things because it, essentially I strongly believe that our the environment should be built and be influenced by the types of people that it's being built for. So everything that I'm doing, it's in and around helping that to happen. And hopefully me being in some of these spaces and contributing my voice and being visible in those spaces would help encourage other people that look like me, have similar backgrounds to me, to also be in those spaces. So t tell me a little bit more about Black females in architecture and perhaps what are the actual things which us at NLA and, and, and others in the profession can do to promote greater diversity and, and respond to the issues raised by uh, Black Lives Matter. 
before black females and architecture started, one of the excuses that I, I felt like I kept on coming across was this assumption or default position of, oh, we don't know where the, where these demographic of people are. We can't see them represented in the industry. And so therefore I feel like where we are making efforts to be represented in the industry and to make ourselves visible, the first thing that, and the easiest thing for anybody to do is to recognize those who are doing that and give them platforms to be able to be even more seen and open more doors um, than we're opening for ourselves. Because I feel like another approach that we've definitely taken is to, to definitely look for opportunities, but fundamentally create our own opportunities, right? But then on the back of creating our own opportunities, um, what would really help is for organizations and institutions to recognize that that's being done and support wherever that effort is being is being done creating uh, opening doors creating more opportunities and for things like um diversifying your your workforce that also contributes to it and tapping into organizations like ours to look for for people who might be interested in a role who might not necessarily have applied for a role if seeing it just in the public realm however if we say okay this is a role we've been approached by this organization they're looking to be more diverse in their approach and they recognize that typically not a lot of people of diverse backgrounds are applying if you go to the diverse organizations and tap into that but then also recognize that it's a lot of effort being put behind it it's a lot of work in our extra, uh, our own spare time being put towards it. So su supporting that financially, recognizing that it is work that we're doing in order to do that, investing in in this creator um, supporting our platform, both um, in what you do, but also in remunerating those efforts. Um, you would typically pay a recruitment agent to to look for um, candidates for you. So why wouldn't you um, contribute financially to support organisations such as ourselves? To, to do any type of work that includes them doing and you know putting their time and effort in those are the like just minimal things that can be done but there's so much more to be done and speaking to organ our organizations is a way to find that out covid19 has done actually quite a lot to highlight uh, uh, inequalities in, in 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 cities and the way we live do you feel optimistic that maybe as we come out of this uh, those issues will be recognized and we'll deal with them better or do you uh, feel that the, uh, might say the struggle uh, will continue even when we come out? The struggle still continues even when we come out. In the best case scenario, in the first few months, if we're lucky, maybe up to a year, it might be more recognized and dealt with a bit more, especially now that there's cameras everywhere and there's a different type of culture emerging that than there has been in the past. But I can't necessarily say I'm confident that people will continue with the same vim and vigor um, indefinitely. So we need to always sort of check unconscious bias, hold people to task and always, the onus is on everybody to really always seek to better themselves and seek to check themselves, check those unconscious bias and check their actions and, and understand if you're taking an action or taking an inaction, how does that really work or affect somebody else? And when someone points something out, don't be dismissive really kind of take it in and ponder it and, and try to understand something from a different their somebody else's perspective but yeah it's 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 unfortunate but i can't say i'm totally optimistic that we're going to come out of lockdown and everybody's going to be have understood everything and totally changed the way they live so Lassie, thank you very much for your comments and thank you very much for all your work and thank you for getting involved in NLA's program. We hope that we can work together to improve the situations that you described. And we at NLA are committed to making sure that we, as an organization, do better as we go forward out of COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you.